Hello, travel friends. Bradley J. Travel here. A trip to Spain included Madrid, Cordoba, Tangier, Ronda, back to Cordoba, and back to Madrid. This is the story of Cordoba. Here we go. Now, this is the beautiful train station in Madrid. Unfortunately, we did not get to depart from this train station because of a mistake I made. And we had to find other transportation from Madrid to Cordoba. Thankfully, my travel partner, Shannon, had it together right away and booked bus tickets from her phone. And while it was a grueling ride, at least we did get there. Imagine you're up all day the day before preparing for the trip, then you go to the airport, you fly, you arrive early in the morning, then you try to find some transportation, manage to get a bus, and then you're on the bus five hours. Man, you are so glad to arrive at the Cordoba bus slash train station area and see something like this, an oasis of food, breezes, Maybe some wine, maybe some beer. Again, thanks to Shannon for being such a trooper and actually pulling it together and getting the transportation from Madrid to Cordoba. And here we are in Cordoba. Very, very happy to find this hotel. For a brief insane moment, we thought about walking from the bus station to the hotel, but happily we did not do that. And it was a beautiful cab ride here. Uh, this place uh, was spectacular it was such a huge bang for the buck i was surprised how great it was and it was right beside right within feet of the mesquita which is this beautiful beautiful cathedral perhaps the most impressive building i have ever been in in all my life and wait till you see the view from this hotel this is right out the window. Look at those beautiful wooden window frames. This place is stunning on the outside and very soon we'll get to the inside. This is the uh, courtyard area once you enter the outer walls. And this is the interior of that building known as the Mesquita. Now this beautiful mosque was constructed in 785, the year 785. And then in 1236, during the Reconquista, after Cordoba was captured by Christian forces, it became a cathedral. Most impressive building I've ever been in. I gotta tell you, Cordoba does get hot. It is beautiful, but around noontime, it's hot. So it's time to get a beverage. And uh, this place looks good. It's some of the famous places you see on YouTube or anything. It's just a little place that happens to be here. So maybe it's time to come in here and get a nice beer or a beautiful sangria for five euro. By the way, the beer is only two euro 90. This turned out to be the perfect place to chill both physically and mentally. After our respite, we headed out and encountered this dancing. Spaniards and people in Spain do like to dance a lot. Here's the same hotel. We got a different room in the same hotel. It was a great room, except the air conditioner leaked into the ceiling and we had to shut the air conditioner off. All right, folks, we're right outside of a very touristy place called Bar Santos, which is right outside the walls of the big cathedral here in Cordoba. It's a thing everybody does is come and get a tortilla, it's two euro 80, and sit on these steps here, sit on this wall, eat your tortilla outside the walls of the cathedral. By all accounts, these things are horrible, but everybody does it anyway. So I am going to do it as well. It's only two euro 80, as I say. If it were expensive, I probably wouldn't bother. Uh, Shannon already had a couple bites out of this to test it, make sure it was okay. 
it is a slice of a big poofy tortilla that's about that tall. They cut a slice and they cut it into pieces. And it, you can, you can see little chunks of potato in there, kind of glued together by probably other potato, I don't know what. And people say it's not that great, but we're gonna go ahead and check it out. I also have something that I will share with you. It's, uh, it tastes like very salty potato. If I were at home and I knew what it tasted like, I would never get it. If it wasn't a touristy thing I had to do, I would never get it. Only get it if you like really salty potatoes. The good news is you can also get beer to wash it down pretty cheaply. And there's something that I like. I get it every time now. Bocarones, which is uh, anchovies in oil and vinegar. I love these. It's a way to not eat fried food around here. It's a way to be pretty healthy and have something that I think is kind of exotic. And uh, that's it. So if you come here, you probably better do it. It's cheap, but don't expect it to taste great. We stayed in Cordoba two days and then headed down to Tangier, then back to Ronda, and then back to Cordoba. And we had been trying to get into a place called Bodega Guzman and failed. Our timing had been off. But finally... All right, I'm super excited. It looks like I'm at Bodega Guzman and there's actually a chance to get in. Usually it's super crowded. By the way, I just saw Rick Steves coming out of here. He was really, really nice. So we're going to go in there and we're going to try some tapa, which this is famous for, some uh, vermouth and barrel, which is vermouth in a barrel. And the thing it's really famous for is the sherry. So come with me and we'll see if this is really worth the hype. Come on. I've been looking at this place on YouTube travel videos for a long time. <laughs> so I was so excited, it was almost too excited and hard to relax. Now here's my partner Shannon to tell us about the food and wine. Here we are in Cordoba at Bodega Guzman, which has been on my bucket list for a very long time. We are very excited to try an assortment of tapas here. First up is carne con tomate, which is beef in tomato. And then moving on, we have pickled mussels, which will be one of Bradley Jay's absolute favorites. Then we also have a local favorite, which is sheep cheese. And then finally, we have some dried chorizo, which is a sausage. A little bit spicy, not too much. Perfect blend of spices and flavors. For drinks, we have Bradley's absolute favorite, which is vermouth de baril, which is vermouth on tap. It's absolutely one of our favorite drinks when we come to Spain. And here we have the local sherry. We're, tonight we're having Montillo sherry, which is not too sweet. When people think of sherry, they think of very sweet, cloying, heavy sherry which isn't always bad. It's nice with desserts or nice with like sweeter cheeses, sweeter nuts. But Montillo is very nice with food. It's clean, it's crisp, it's refreshing, it's served cold. So it's perfect with food, especially in hot Spanish nights. Highly recommend. Mm. Yum. Oh yeah, man, that place. Is everything is cracked up to be. If you ever get to Cordoba, it's Bodega Guzman. And get here the minute it opens, or you won't be able to get in. One fun way to insinuate yourself into any culture is to get a straight razor shave at a barber shop. I did it in Tangier and loved it. Loved the barber, loved the people hanging out in the barber shop. So I sought out another barber in. Uh, Spain, he was awesome. He loved Marky Ramon. Besides being a cultural experience, a shave in a barber shop leaves you looking and feeling sharp. After the shave, we encountered a wedding and then went on to have a nice cool beverage and a nice cool shady breezy spot. Now check out this hotel. Uh, first went to a room that they gave us at this hotel in Cordoba, right outside the Mesquita, which is the cathedral. And it was kind of Thank, for lack of a better word. Went down and said, hey, this doesn't look like the one in the picture because it had said full bed. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. Take this room instead. 
and so I'm hoping this room is uh, a lot better. Let's, and I thought we'd check it out together. All right. Right away you can tell the outside is better anyway. Oh, yeah. We have, looks like some exposed stone walls. Some, some nice lighting. Decent bed. A separate viewing, you know, TV area, which the other one didn't have. So this is the courtyard in one of the hotels we stayed at in Cordoba. And it is quite spectacular. And rather than go and fight the crowds, we found a fancy sherry vermouth shop, which as you might guess, has fancy sherry and vermouth. And I'm a, vermo a vermouth freak. Well, it's time to resume the search for the ultimate tapas. It's really challenging to find the good tapas restaurants. You do what you can, you research. Some turn out to be great. Some turn out to be not so great. Next, it's Taberna Salinas, established in 1924. Usually there's a line, no line here right at opening. Let's find out about Taberna Salinas right now. There are a couple of dishes that we haven't had a chance to try yet at this point. One is a very hearty stew, and the other is the dinner-sized portion of rabba de toro. All right, let's find out if the food is really all that good at Taberna de Salinas. First, we're gonna go with the chickpea stew. It's made with, obviously, chickpeas, beef, bacon, and ham, and vegetables and it's been stewing all day, and you can taste it. It's beyond, it's really beyond description. It's beyond any sort of soup or stew you've had ever probably flavor-wise. It blows away standard beef stew when it comes to quantity of flavor, and I would argue maybe even quality, but that depends on your taste. Now let's go to the Rabba de Toro, or oxtail, braised oxtail. We've had the uh, tapa version of this, which was much smaller, and it was only like $1.50. This is meal sized and meal priced, but still very cheap. And frankly, it might be different for the uh, American taste, because it's kind of fatty. But as, as you've been told, fat adds flavor, and this is no exception. It is extremely flavorful. And if you come here, it's one of those things, as they say, you must, must try. Again, the quantity and quality of flavor, difficult to describe, but take the most flavorful beef you've had and the most flavorful gravy and mix them together, double it, and you might have something here. And then dipping these patatas frites in the gravy is just gravy. Well, just finished up my last vermouth. I gotta say, this place is everything that it is cracked up to be. Come and visit when you come to Spain. Next up on the Cordoba restaurant list is Taberna Gangora, another one that does very well in the ratings. Uh, again, let's find out what it's all about. Saturday night, and uh, we got here at exactly eight when it opens, and you gotta do that if you don't forget about it but uh, let's find out if it's all that it's cracked up to be we did have a significant walk to get here but that's a good thing because we were stuffed from the previous restaurant I'm only gonna get a few items three kind of tapa items because we're full the first is Baron Hainas fritas which is fried eggplant I've had it before and it was awesome I'm getting my very, very favorite bucarones and vinagre which is uh, anchovies and vinegar and oil. And there's one other item we're going to get, and it's the champion a la plancha. Mm. Woo! We are stuffed, Shannon and I are stuffed. It's our second big meal of the night. And this one wasn't even that big. We only had three tapa. I had my anchovies in vinegar and oil. And uh, there was eggplant, 
fried, but not crispy. They're crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, with a sort of, it, it seemed like a molasses sauce on the top. Fantastic. And stuffed mushrooms. Mushrooms stuffed with bacon and spinach and something else. Big mushroom caps. Beautiful. And as I mentioned before, you had to walk a long way to get here. And as a result, we were the only tourists in the place. Families, everybody seemed to know each other. If you can manage the walk out here to Taberta Gongora, I think you'll be pretty pleased. This is Cordoba and Taberna Gongora. Try it out. Cordoba is a beautiful evening strolling city. And a walk home after a beautiful meal or three is really pleasant. It's also wonderful to know you're going back to a beautiful sanctuary of a hotel. It was quiet and it had this, what I consider a beautiful view of the walls of the Mesquita. If you like this video, please subscribe, click on the bell to get notified of future posts, share and rate these.